it is a yearly thing so i am yeah. looking at a yearly revenue of at least 50 lakhs net yeah. and yeah. i am uh, once i start building on these projects and include other ones then this the basket is just going to keep growing bigger and bigger it's a yearly revenue mode for me now You are listening to Understanding the Future podcast. I am the host Punit Gandhi, and this podcast is developed in association with Climate Center for Cities under the National Institute of Urban Affairs and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. This is a podcast where we discuss about the future of work in the field of climate change, urban development, innovation, and sustainability, with the help of leaders and visionaries working on ground as well as in the top management of public and private sector. Our objective is to better understand the future so that we can be prepared and intervene to enable climate actions in the urban areas. Hello everyone, welcome to the podcast Understanding the Future. I am the host Punit Gandhi and today we have with us Shri Aditi Garg. She is the CEO of Indore Smart City Development Limited. She will help us in understanding the future of carbon credits for cities. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you. So let's start our conversation by understanding how how did Indore come up with the idea of utilizing carbon credits for city projects that Smart Cities is doing. So we have been working on uh, energy, many of these uh, environmentally sustainable energy projects. and uh, we uh, in in our municipal corporation as well as the smart city have many projects that contribute to reducing our carbon footprint so the idea germinated around 2 years ago when we decided that we should do a mapping of how we reduce our carbon footprint through these energy efficient and uh, environmentally friendly sustainable projects that indoor smart city and uh, municipal corporation have taken up so from there on we decided that uh, now that we have mapped our uh, carbon footprint we should work towards a way in which we can uh, monetize the investment that has been made towards these environmental projects obviously we went through the regular process like any other smart city of uh, going through a tendering uh, process to hire expert who would help us and hand hold us through this entire process and uh, i mean the culmination of that long journey is today where uh, we have not only uh, figured out our own energy efficient project but at the same time we have tried to turn around our investment and make a small but sizable investment return from it okay and uh, so what are the, the projects that we are currently talking about in this carbon credits what, what has been taken up as the first case studies and first uh, line of projects where indore has received the funding So when we started we did not really have a template to work on we yeah. didn't uh, uh, we couldn't really copy paste from elsewhere because it had not been tried anywhere else and the cities and municipal corporations and smart cities that had been successful in uh, taking the sub had gone only as far as uh, getting themselves registered for carbon credits and perhaps generating them as well uh, so we decided that we will start small but to a sizable number of projects so we took up three projects one of which is a biomethanation plant of ours the other is a biocomposting plant and the third is of similar nature so with these waste to energy plants we decided that uh, we could make a headway uh, into this entire process and try and understand and learn for ourselves it was basically a more of a learning by doing kind of an enterprise where uh we wanted to test the waters and experience it for ourselves whether um selling and trading these credits would be successful now that we have come this far we have realized that we can obviously undertake the entire process again for a much larger set of projects and uh, go through the whole process uh, for our benefit okay uh, so so coming down to the project level right now because i think that is where the interest lies as well that 
uh, we are talking about biomethanation and composting and that i think is only possible because of the journey that indore has also gone through with swachh sarvekshan uh, so how much are you generating and how much carbon are you uh, successfully mitigating over here so when we undertook the study we did that for these three projects plus a couple of other projects as well went ahead and registered our uh, these small bunch of projects and we realized that our total emissions uh, reduction was uh, around the scale of uh, 283 carbon tons of equivalent uh, reduction of greenhouse gas then out of these 2 lakh 80 we decided that we will go ahead and uh, try and sell or trade on an international forum somewhere around 1 lakh 70000 tons of carbon dioxide yeah. and uh, it is through the selling of this 1 lakh 70000 tons of uh, carbon dioxide that we have realized uh, approximately 70 lakhs uh, gross revenue and um, about 52 lakhs of net revenue okay this market does not exist in india right now the carbon credits in itself so how do you bring in that trust factor as well that someone from abroad is investing in a project like this uh, how do you bring into that ecosystem that's a really uh, key question here because uh, like i said there are other cities that try to go ahead with the whole process of selling and trading the carbon credits on international markets but one of the biggest things that perhaps made uh, the road easier is although indore is a second tier city in uh, when compared with the megapolis of uh, india we have been the cleanest city of india for uh, four years in a row and we proudly uh, you know wear that um, hat and we try to present ourselves as the city that uh, has tried to bring about change uh, through cleanliness through our uh, sustainability campaigns and through environmentally friendly projects so we uh, try to reach out and put that foot forward where we told the international buyers that we were a city that was investing quite seriously in these projects and perhaps that was our usp because uh, i mean we we put our buck where our money is and uh, we have been able to successfully show performance uh, over the past four years and showcase some of the best implemented projects uh, in the country in fact i don't mean to boast but one of the factors that went into this consideration was also that indore smart city has been the best performing smart city as per an analysis done by the government of india and our uh, implementation percentage our completion percentage has been the highest so yeah. these factors go into convincing uh, investors into bringing buyers and having been through the process now i feel that we are confident that when we take up our next branch of projects we will be we will be able to find buyers very easily yeah so before going into the next uh, set of projects that comes into picture i i would also like to deep dive into what are the process of getting this whole carbon credits because just from the point of view that i i do understand a bit of that process for industries and uh, commercial segment but for the city how does that function as government you are an entity over there and managing a lot many more thing than just uh, you know one plant so how does that function here right so uh, i think the process is pretty standard for uh, government as well as private enterprises the only difference perhaps is in the mechanisms and the protocols that one applies under we have started out our journey by trying to sell our credits on the cdm uh, mechanism under the unfcc and uh, we realized that since it is the market for the mandatory carbon savers and the mandatory market carbon buyers it is a market which is by and large stifled in its uh, price because of the mandatory nature of the market the voluntary uh, savers and the yeah. voluntary carbon credit generators do not get the most optimum price there 
Yep. Hence, we then decided to go in for the voluntary carbon mechanism. And uh, we decided that the voluntary market was more favorable to our uh, projects because uh, we have not, I mean, in India, we are not bound to, and hence we have not taken up these projects as part of a mandatory protocol of reduction. But because we have voluntarily invested in trying to make our city sustainable and uh, environmentally more friendly. So uh, that was the first process. I think we spent a reasonable amount of time in trying to understand what kind of a protocol would apply best to us. And uh, once we got that out of the way, it was uh, a, a rather standard approach because first of all, we have to get the validation uh, sorted, which we, we got done with an external auditor, beyond which we then uh, approached the International Regulatory Authority. In our case, it was the VERA. And uh, we got a registration, uh, we had to get a registration done from Vera. A team of experts comes down to verify the projects and uh, that process was also undertaken. Post, uh, uh, post registration and verification, we were issued credits. As you were aware, one ton of carbon dioxide is equivalent to one uh, carbon credit. Okay. And uh, we generated 1,70,000 carbon credits with the uh, with these three projects that we had undertaken once we got that far we realized that uh, we although it seemed tedious and uh, well rather bureaucratic we realized that actually we had crossed the easier part so far and uh, the more tough part of the journey was still remaining because we were trying to look for buyers and uh, we started scouting out buyers testing international waters and like I said, convincing people about the reputation of the smart city, the veracity of the projects was, um, uh, was a task. And with the help of some of our experts, we were able to do that. Post which we, we adopted uh, what is called a, a trial and error kind of strategy. We decided to sell our carbon credits as a bunch, as a whole. And, and we got a certain rate for that. Then we decided it would be easier for us to stagger it and, and sell it because uh, we might get a higher rate. So we tried different mechanisms on the international carbon market. My, my purpose and my perspective with the carbon credit is that it requires patience, it requires time, and it requires a certain bent of mind to understand what uh, the international market wants. When we try to stagger it, we realized that actually we were getting a lesser rate than the one that we had uh, been quoted uh, for the whole bunch. And uh, although we thought ourselves smart enough to get a better rate, we, we, we didn't. Yeah. When we went back to the drawing board, we realized that actually our waste to energy projects had already got the best possible rate that these carbon credits are getting at the present uh, uh, scenario. Usually, we were uh, being quoted a rate of 1.3 or, uh, sorry, 0 0.3 or 0 0.45 maximum. But for our waste to energy projects, we got a rate of 0 0.5 USD, which is 50 cents per uh, carbon credit, okay. which was uh, a huge win. Sorry, just, is, it, is it 50 cents or 0 0.05 cents? Uh, no, 50 cents. Oh, okay, because the article had mentioned it as uh, 0 0.05. Cents. Yeah, that's the error there, uh, but I think uh, uh, that was a uh, typo of some sort. But we got yeah. uh, 0 0.50 US dollars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 50 cents US dollars um, uh, for uh, our carbon credit. And uh, that converted to approximately 70, uh, 70 lakh rupees. And uh, the, the benefit of this was that. Although we had gone through a rather long winded process of trying to get the best rate, we also got a lot of learning of how the international market operates. So it is an experience that I take away in trying to understand a new market in, in being, you know, governments in the government sector, we are usually used to being a monopolistic buyer. But here we were in a competitive market, uh, being a competitive seller. So it, is a, it, it was a great learning experience for us as a smart city and for a municipal corporation to do this at an international stage and uh, still manage to get the best possible rate out. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's true. And uh, 
I do remember that one of the earlier podcasts that we had done, we had gotten Mahindra on board, and they had started putting as corporate that you know that we have a fixed carbon price that if we are emitting this much, can we mitigate it within this much? So how much is that? So I think as corporates and governments do start to shift. it will be more and more interesting to see how we can reduce major amount of carbon emissions right uh, and i mean i think uh, uh, purit from my point of view as a as an administrator i feel uh, this is where we have to go beyond the uh, you know we have to push the envelope a little we have to experiment governments and our uh, policies cannot be straight jacketed into a certain given solution so yeah. this is where we can experiment and perhaps using the market mechanism to realize uh, revenues this is the first time that we have done that with at yeah. an international forum so we were keen that we not only are able to do it but also do it successfully so that we yeah. can showcase to others that yes there is money in this and it is possible for us to start taking up environmentally friendly projects and make it feasible i am not saying that carbon credit sale will uh, you know help you recover the entire cost of the project no but it can help you recover some part of the opex expenditure that you will be doing as yeah. uh, as an investor and that is some return over no return so Absolutely. Uh, i just wanted to always have this uh, notion challenge that environmentally friendly projects are not economically viable projects so we we thought we will we will push the envelope there and we were happy to be able to do so and that's wonderful and also uh, if we can have certain kind of you know guide that how much returns did you get on the opex cost or something that you are expect uh, that you were expecting to tell you the truth uh, punith we thought that we will get somewhere i mean we had been told that uh, carbon credits usually get you somewhere around uh, 0.5 to 1 percent of the total project cost. Okay. But we were quite happy that in two out of three we were able to get around 1.5 percent of our uh, wow. project cost recovered. So yeah. uh, I think we have not. Uh, I mean, we have not gone, gotten very far with this. But since we have got a toehold in this, we hope to now come back with a mightier and a more bigger set of projects. Absolutely. It's. better than nothing right that if you are getting no yeah. cost out of it you are getting 1.5% it's still a win that's that it and i think it is important for us as policy makers and implementers in the field you know i mean policy makers out there and we the implementers in the field to see eye to eye i yeah. mean they there is i i come from an economics background and there is always uh, the theory floated that uh, any any enterprise or any uh investment is successful only when the private benefit is greater than the uh, private cost but what happens with environmental projects is that or or any such projects where the energy efficiency parameters are taken into consideration the uh, the problem is that the social benefit is higher than the private benefit yeah so usually these projects are shelved and people assume that look what is the point of taking them up when my personal return is very less yes if i have a solar rooftop it will help me save my on my energy bill but largely it is only going to help the environment and do i really care about the environment that much so yeah. that is the notion that i personally wanted to test and challenge whether making investment in environmentally friendly projects can give you a personal return as well yeah over and above the societal benefit so uh, i think we've been able to get somewhere with that and uh, yeah that's that's actually and we are also like we also do look into that how can we define social cost because if it can be defined then you can basically justify why investing that's in some technology is better than the other especially in this day and age that's right so, i mean what is the social benefit of investing in uh, making a city clean there Absolutely. has been no conclusive answer for that but the benefit is definitely there i mean we know that benefit but uh, i think uh, economics still has to catch up uh, on on finding the right uh, you know hence proved answers for these yeah because it's it's way too intertwined there are too many factors that comes into picture and that just makes it much more complex uh, 
So moving forward to uh, so what other projects now? Because one part of it is successful now. You have accomplished the process that needs to go in. What all other projects are being thought of under this uh, uh, to adapt under the carbon credit process? So we are now going gung ho with this, and uh, yeah. we have decided to open three fronts. One is uh, going ahead with the already listed projects and adding to the listed projects of smart city in law as well as municipal corporation in law. Yes. So we'll be taking up those in-house projects first of all. The second thing that we are trying to do is uh, we are also trying to convince other departments and other government agency to start taking up CDM mechanism as part of their workings and uh, undertake the process. We are happy to handhold a couple of these government agencies as well. So we are presently in talk and negotiations with them. The third is uh, the wider market out there, the big bad private sector. Yeah. We are also trying to have certain negotiations with the private sector where we can say that, look, if you have made that investment into uh, your maybe your energy efficiency lights or making your office a green building or uh, having solar panels or windmill or whatever uh, have you if you have made that investment then please reach out to us because we can provide you the return that you would otherwise not get for a standalone project so we are now trying to get economies of scale into this and uh, our, our whole point of this exercise is that, yes, there is a market out there to be tagged, yeah. but let us do it in the most efficient and, well, to not overuse the word, but the most smart way. So yeah. we are clubbing all of these projects together because uh, economies of scale sort of work here. And we have now the confidence to say that, look, yes, we can find a buyer for uh, each of these projects and yeah. we will be able to generate revenue. And in the process, we hope that we will be able to get some investment, uh, I mean, some return for the investment that is already made. True. This does look like a humongous task, I, I do believe, because when you are yeah. bringing in the private sector, you will have to bring in benchmarks and standards so that all those projects are at a certain level and not just, uh, you know, any project comes into picture. So I do believe that it will be a humongous task. Um, yes, because uh, I think capacity is our biggest challenge as of now. You know, this uh, uh, this thing was started uh, as the brainchild of one of my uh, previous municipal commissioners. Yeah. And then it was sort of uh, played around with uh, uh, by four or five of us. Yeah. Now we are, you know, it, it seems like we are the talk of the town and we are getting so many requests that we yeah. ourselves are uh, uh, sort of uh, trying to build up the capacity. So we will have to ramp up that capacity soon and yeah. uh, cater to the needs because this is an untapped potential. And I feel uh, yeah. we haven't really done anything innovative. We have just been procedural, but we have stuck with the procedure. Yeah. I mean, we have gone all the way. And that is the only reason we've been able to reap the benefits. And I want other people to sort of get the benefit as well. True, true, true. So, so coming to the bigger picture of carbon emissions and everything. Uh, when we look at it from the urban sector and municipal, as a SPV, a smart cities mission, we are looking at one as the bringing in of efficiency and another is from the part of how do we get the carbon out of the atmosphere. So then you come towards the tree, uh, planting more trees and everything. So are there any thought processes currently going around those lines where we can, while making it more efficient, we can also uh, extract more of uh, the pollution out? Yeah, so we have uh, at uh, Smart City, if I can answer your question slightly differently, we have undertaken a couple of very innovative uh, projects at Smart City uh, in Lord. You know, there are a lot of plantation drives that are taken up in different places and uh, Often it is associated with uh, either a national uh, holiday or a big event. Or... So plantation drives uh, happen everywhere and they're also part of the government scheme. I mean, if you look at uh, Narega today, where I mean plantations are taken up as a valid activity under yeah. Narega also. So we uh, at Smart City came up with this idea of doing a tree census where we decided that we will undertake the marking and the cataloging of every tree that exists 
in Indore yep. and geotagging each of them. So we now have, we, we are sitting on a catalog uh, for Indore where we not only know what uh, number of trees we actually have, but at the same time, we also know what species, which variety, what kind of a girth, how old, how new. Yeah. And at the same time, it helps us in uh, undertaking those decisions as to where the next plantation drive should be taken up. Because we have the map of the city, which uh, uh, based on our existing data, we know is how clean and how green and not so green and completely barren. So we have a, we have a base map of that now. So that is one of the projects that we have taken up and uh, uh, I'm curious to see if we can get that listed in our next, uh, you know, carbon protocol as well. The second thing is uh, uh, we are redoing a lot of our streets, our parks, our um, neighborhoods and our, our whole perspective is to improve upon what exists. So we are having a few handheld AQI devices, which we are installing at different places and uh, we'll take a regular reading. And we are also backing that up with an in-house developed uh, air purifier. It's a locally made air purifier by one of our uh, startups. And yep. want to just compare over a period of time whether these interventions can actually help improve you know, the air quality. Yep. The, the reason I give you these, um, I mean, these data points and these, these projects specifically is because we are now in an age where our decision making has to be evidence based and if we are yes. not doing that then we are not making effective decisions effective policies and implementable projects so yes. smart cities the perspective with these things is that our input our whole uh, i mean um, essence is around being that essentially evidence based data policy maker for yes. the city and we plan better, we plant better, and we obviously project better. So that's, yeah. the, that's the whole scope of uh, smart cities. No, absolutely. And that's very important because uh, once we start doing this, it, it will also be important, I feel, to constantly monitor what's happening. Because unless and until we do that, it does not make sense to bring so much of change uh, so much of, uh, and invest in so much of change. Uh, that's right. And uh, so how, how are we looking at that perspective? Like what kind of constant monitoring that needs to be done for the carbon credit project? So we do have a lot of interest as well as investment now uh, in planning for our uh, carbon credit cycles. You realize that uh, this revenue that we have generated um, from the wholesale of carbon credit is not a one-time expense or it's not a one-time revenue. It is a yearly thing. So I'm yeah. looking at a yearly revenue of at least 50 lakhs net. Yes. And I'm uh, once I start building on these projects and include other ones, then this the basket is just going to keep growing bigger and bigger. And it's a yearly revenue mode for me now. Uh, the, the way we are now working in terms of identifying where we are and uh, where we are going is we have now set up an in-house uh, committee where we start identifying the new and old projects and list them as per protocols and mechanisms and uh, take them up in tranches so that we can plan better as well. Because uh, our idea is that although we have undertaken a lot of uh, you know, energy efficient, solar friendly or uh, I mean carbon reducing projects, we at the same time realize that we have not done enough and there is tremendous scope for more. There are areas that we are now exploring, like uh, the whole concept of having carbon-linked project implementation. We are trying to look at that. At the same yeah. time, we are trying to reduce our carbon footprint uh, in terms of project planning and uh, implementation as well. Yeah. So we are trying to work backwards, but I think uh, we are, I would have to admit, we are still in a learning stage and uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, yeah, that is there. And I, I hope that we do get along in this together so that everyone can learn from this and and try and tap into this revenue because the last episode that we had was on municipal revenue and we were discussing some of the challenges on those lines and how those can be mitigated but that is the whole idea uh, somebody did mention to me the other day that 
our venture has just opened up a whole new stream of revenue for municipal corporations. Yes. And that is exactly how Indore Municipal Corporation has benefited because these projects that belong to municipal corporations are now going to start generating a yearly revenue. I think we have to, like I said, uh, and I uh, want to repeat myself again, we have to push the envelope here because we are uh, we have sort of exhausted the limit of uh, revenue generation as well. And if we want to survive, we do have to look at other sources of revenue generation. Yes. Uh, so do, do you see this coming up with other projects, uh, especially on the city line, because there is always city always has an old part and the new part and the old part re renovation, rejuvenation of those areas is generally much more difficult. Uh, you have taken up Chappan Dukan area as one of those projects and done it. Uh, but similarly, are you trying to integrate such things? How can infrastructure projects benefit for cities on these lines? Yeah, so uh, one of the biggest things that uh, Indore Smart City takes credit for is that we are working in the in the most congested, the most uh, densest part of Indore. Our project is primarily retrofitting. And uh, we are working um, in the area of old Indore, where uh, you know implementing something new is not easy. And every time we go out to lay a pipeline, also we don't know how many lines have already been uh, you know laid under, underneath. So we are trying to work uh, comprehensively uh, in the ABD area. So that is to answer the first part of your question. The second part, uh, I mean, how do environmental projects gain from from this? We are trying to come up with a way of incorporating uh, the cycle of reducing carbon footprint on one of our projects, which is uh, the Rajwada. Hmm. The Rajwada is primarily a, a retrofitting project. The Rajwada is the uh, architecturally uh, most prized monument of uh, Indore, and we are doing a retrofit of that entire monument building. We are trying to work out a way in which we can reduce our carbon footprint by breaking it down into mandates. It is an exercise that we are presently trying to undertake, but the objective of that is how can we undertake projects? Because after all, smart cities are at the end of the day, the day infrastructure companies. So how do we reduce our carbon footprint on each and every project of our own? Yeah. To the point that I can say that by a certain year, carbon carbon uh, credit trading will get us to the point where I can say that now Indoor Smart City is a carbon neutral city. Yeah. So we're trying to achieve that where we are saying that for a certain number of projects, we'll try to reduce our carbon footprint. And on the other hand, we'll also try to keep investing in uh, in environmentally sustainable projects. So we are we are coming up with a solar power plant within the municipal corporation itself. Then uh, we also have a project of uh, undertaking uh, sludge hygienization, which is basically saying that we can convert the sludge into effective bio manure that we can then sell. So these are all ways in which we can, uh, you know, nurture our own environment and give back to the city that has given so much to us. True. True. And uh, yeah, that, that is one of the most important things because eventually that is where you have to bring in financial sustainability till now. As a city, that has been one of the major challenges for a lot of cities. And unless and until we do bring it back, we can't sustain such kind of changes. Uh, so, so coming to the carbon neutral, it's, it's again top of the town that how do we bring it? And uh, there are a lot of uh, energy efficiency and mitigation as we were talk, uh, talking about. But are there any bigger thoughts and alignment with private industries as well uh, that you have been thinking about? I think we are, I think I'm, uh, I would have to admit that we are still in the national stage. Yeah. But we are open to engagement and we do want to learn from the environmental giants that are out there. And I, uh, I mean, I'm very pleased to hear and know more now that uh, the private sector and the industry has taken the lead in this. So we want to learn and implement from them. Our uh, uh, first point of call, obviously, is in trying to understand 
what kind yeah. of a carbon footprint we create for ourselves so creating a base map that is our starting point and uh, then engaging with the industry in terms of how we can reduce it at the same time make it a profitable venture for uh, for all involved so that's that's the overall goal absolutely that's that's true so coming to one of the last questions that we always ask everyone is on the lines that what are the future skill sets required or uh, skills that youth will need to come into this field because uh, urban area and the work you do has a lot of facets to it i will try and narrow it down to just carbon credits and footprints because otherwise there will be a whole university that can come up but yeah what what kind of skills do you feel will be important and are important in developing this kind of mechanisms so surprisingly the kind of skills that are needed for these new ventures are pretty much the skills that are required at the core of any smart city function and uh, i think we need to relook at what smart cities are now doing and uh, how we do uh, what we do at the outset i think the first thing which is required is uh, being comfortable and open to accepting that there is a lot of uncertainty out there yeah we are prone to change i mean i can say for smart city itself that we have undergone tremendous change in the past 8 months since we faced the pandemic for the first time and we were face to face with a situation where uh, you know the entire infrastructure and capability of the smart city had to be revamped in order to deal with the pandemic that the whole country was uh, tackling uh, with so i think the first uh, most important thing is being comfortable with uncertainty the second thing is uh, the capability and the expertise to understand data i think that is my biggest takeaway from the time that i have spent in smart city here in indore i think if we can understand data better if we can include data into our decision making better if we can understand how data impacts the day to day life of every individual we would be able to deliver to the expectations of the people and that is precisely the reason why smart cities have been set up because we have to do what municipal corporations have been doing at the same time prove that we are efficient smarter we are municipal corporations 2.0 effectively yep. and uh, how do we get that uh, or how do we come to that state only when we start understanding our data better yep. so the one important skill set for i think future administrators policy makers and implementers is uh evidence based decision making which has to be relevant on the ground yeah the third thing from my experience of carbon credits has been uh an understanding of uh, the the world beyond our means it took us uh, like i said the the tender for this entire thing was done two years ago but we started understanding the shape of things only quite recently and uh, when we deep dived into it we realize that there is this whole world out there which is operating and making efficient decisions on the back of these very factors so my uh, i think my third most important uh, skill set would be the the ability to incorporate on a day to day basis things that are presently taking shape the world over the longer we delay the transmission of information technology knowledge as well as expertise to our second and third tier towns the i think the the longer and harder will be our process to urbanize effectively and make ourselves you know friendly people friendly cities so that transmission has to be faster and we as uh, the next generation should uh, perhaps take the onus of uh, of of trying to transmit that quickly because uh, i feel uh, urbanization in india although is very fast paced it is not as uh, planned and methodical as it can be true so there's tremendous scope there yeah that's that's very true and i'm i'm really glad that i could get you on here for the interview and understand a lot of things from the city perspective especially in the 
new segment of business that's coming up and not a lot of people have done this so if i have missed out on any point and you would like to cover that up uh, please do so no i think we have been very thorough thank you thank you thanks a lot ma'am it was pleasure interviewing you i did learn a lot of things from this especially because we we are at the center and the ground is a very different ball game so i guess more and more people could learn from this and thanks a lot right. for your time no thank you thank you so much thank you for uh, taking the time out and the and, and showing the interest in this because uh, i mean after all you are doing uh, us a human service by spreading the word because our work can only go so far and impact uh, the limited number of lives but uh, i think we should spread the word further so that uh, this can benefit the the teeming millions of this country who should at the end of the day get the benefit from uh, from you know this entire uh, mechanism absolutely i will try to do as as much as possible thank you ma'am thank you so much me thank you you have been listening to understanding the future podcast to know more about climate center for cities visit us at www.c-q.niua.org and follow us on linkedin twitter and instagram the show is conceptualized hosted and produced by punit gandhi you can listen to the show on apple podcast google podcast and spotify so don't forget to subscribe to podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues Thank you and stay tuned for the next episode.